Pepe the Frog meets Chuck Mangione will not be seen at this time. In its place, something else that will leave you with a good feeling. This is GTV, the new standard in online video. Is too much knowledge a good thing? Is it good to be wise with a complete comprehensive understanding of the world that surrounds us? Or is it better that we live blissfully unaware of all the things that live beyond the blinders applied to our surroundings and even by ourselves? Well, I don't have the answer. That really lies in the hearts of each and every one of you. It's a personal decision for each of us. Why am I even talking about this? I've been reflecting back on the topics covered here over the years and what we've learned together. I've taught you and you've taught me. It might sound like I'm ready to wrap things up and end the channel, but I'm not. It has been a fun journey so far and who knows where things go next. One of the marquee features of this channel has been to highlight the gap between Japan and the West to try and bridge that gap where possible bringing the two cultures together, at least as much as I can for a tiny outlet that talks about games, among other things, 20 times a year. As for this gap and discussions about it, my brain always sticks on one minor, ultra-minute point. That is, nowadays, anytime I talk about the 16-bit golden age of Sega, I have to say Mega Drive and Genesis, both for clarity and to fend off the flood of comments that I'd get if one or the other went without a mention. And of course, deservedly so, because who doesn't know in America, the Mega Drive was the Genesis, or vice versa. It's kind of like how I have to explain non-metric measurements to my American family, but still need to mention them in metric because that's what they are. Anyway, you hear the story all the time. The Mega Drive is the Mega Drive in Japan, Europe, the UK, Australia, Brazil, and so on, while the Mega Drive in the US is the Genesis, because a product named Mega Drive already existed in America, so Sega couldn't use the name. And on top of that, Genesis sounds cooler, as Sega could position themselves as the true beginning of real gaming, erasing the Atari and Nintendo years that came before. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating that last point, but that is how things ended up. And back in those days when the Mega Drive and Genesis were new and active, nobody really thought about the naming scheme in places other than our own living rooms. Mostly because we simply weren't aware of it in most cases. Sure, maybe some back issues of our favorite game magazines mentioned the fact in an offhand manner. But back then, a kid could easily forget such a thing and have no means to express such findings, nor communicate them with anyone else. So off to the back of the mind it went, never to be recalled again. Looking back, it's interesting to see how these publications balanced Japanese names with those in English, as well as what was just a working title and what was set in stone. Oh yeah, they do call Super Nintendo Super Famicom in Japan. That's what we all heard in 1991. How could we forget? Hey, why can't we have Dracula X in America? Yep, and Mega Man is actually Rockman. How weird. Then of course the Mega Drive 2. What? Sega is dead last in Japan? How? Even with Sonic 2? Anyway, like I said, in the US, Sega called their machine the Genesis because some other computer company had blocked them or so the story goes. So I always wondered, what exactly was this American Mega Drive? Whatever happened to it? And why in a world where 29,000 people make 874 million videos a year about everything there is to know about games, nobody has ever thought to talk about this. Thanks to modern technology, we can finally get to the bottom of this. Let's send it to break and then get right to it. この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。セガ。
メガドライブの16ビットソフトシリーズが面白さぶっちぎりでドッカンとデビューまずは縦横機そしてスペースハリアー2やっぱゲームは16ビット両本ボールセーガー Time to set the Wayback Machine to 1988. This has always been one of my favorite destinations. Nintendo was at its peak, 16 bit was on the horizon, Walkmans were in every pocket. The promise of a high tech future just hung in the air. As I just mentioned, the seat change from 8 to 16 bit gaming was underway. Sega was winding down its Mark III and Master System. The machine was somewhat popular, but was outsold by the Nintendo family computer by over 2 to 1. Though it couldn't win the day, the Master System was technically superior in many areas, including a higher number of on screen colors, better sound through the FM sound processor, and, in many cases, larger cartridge size overall. It was a point of pride that more than a few Mark III and Master System games were over 1 megabit in size, while the most popular family computer games were oftentimes not. Super Mario Bros. and The Adventure of Link are just two examples. In these days, Sega used this point to their advantage and labeled cart sizes on the front of the box for each game to make them stand out. Even in America, a place well known for top tier Sega box art, games one Mega and up earned a special designation as Mega cartridges. But the time had come for the next generation. Sega had come up with an amazing machine with a super fast CPU. Lots of colors and games that finally brought the arcade home. The machine was named Mega Drive and hit the streets of Japan on October 29th, 1988. Of course, we all know that, and maybe we've heard the name Mega Drive so many times it causes some semantic satiation. We don't really think of the original meaning behind these words, as they've taken on a new meaning as a proper noun. In this case, the name of a great and popular game machine. But the naming of the Mega Drive was very deliberate and specific. Back then, video games were not taken seriously. They were seen as mere toys, and the companies behind them didn't have the stature of giant corporations like Toyota or Sony. So, to give things a boost, video game hardware started adopting nomenclature that made things sound a little more serious. There was the Cassette Vision, Family Computer, and PC Engine, all of which borrowed terms. From other forms of technology in order to gain some gravitas. With the Mega Drive, it was simple. Every cartridge would be over 1 megabit in size, starting out at 4 megs for the first few titles, then the sky's the limit. They might even reach 10 times that size someday, and they'd all run on the sleek, black, 16 bit Sega system, casting the image of an all powerful computer interface capable of anything. Now, before we go any further, I need to take a sidebar and explain that if you look up some of the cartridge sizes, you might find conflicting, confusing information. That's because way back when, games were measured in bits, while today all things digital are measured in bytes. So, what's the difference? I want to keep it as short as possible, but basically, 8 bits equals 1 byte, meaning that an 8 megabit cartridge, like Strider, Might appear online somewhere as being one megabyte. And of course, smaller games would be measured in kilobytes. It gave games more oomph to use the bigger numbers associated with bits. But even back then, real computers used bytes. For example, three and a half inch floppy disks held 1.44 megabytes, which is enough to hold a copy of Strider with just enough room for Flicky. Things shifted to bytes in the mid 90s when CDs became standard and the cartridge became mostly obsolete. Those CD ROMs could hold 700 megabytes of data, or 5600 megabits. Each CD ROM had a varying amount of data. Some weren't much bigger than a cartridge, while others completely filled the disk. Most of that 700 was just music, not game code, so the size of the game really didn't matter anymore. However, now that each modern game requires enough hard drive space to be installed and run, it actually does matter again. But let's get back on track. The Mega Drive had its Japanese debut and would soon move on to the rest of the world, America being the next destination. Only something got in the way. 
which altered history forever, giving us the Sega Genesis. Gaming Lore says that a computer company called Mega Drive had already trademarked the term, which locked Sega out. So let's search online and see what we can find. Using the Internet Archive, I easily found a company that once existed called Mega Drive Systems, registered online at megadrive.com, with the earliest capture going back to 1996. At the time, Mega Drive sold various data storage units, ranging from one gigabyte up to two terabytes. Impressive for the time. I even found some press releases for these products. And these state, without a doubt, the company Mega Drive was founded in 1988, one year before the Genesis was released in America. As for why we don't see Mega Drive systems these days, the company was bought out and merged with other holdings in 1998. The successor company today is Data Direct Networks. The domain, megadrive.com, amazingly, is available. Someone could, and should, go scoop that up now, while you can. It all seems pretty convincing, so all we have to do now is head on over to the U.S. Trademark Database to find the registration, solving this once and for all. Here it is. Hey, wait. This says that the trademark for Mega Drive was filed October 1st, 1991? Something's not right here. This is an anachronism. Or the story we were always told isn't right. I'm going to need to go to break again. Give me some time to get this all sorted out. Maybe put on another pot of coffee. It could be a while. Back after this. So it turns out that Sega was never blocked on the issue of a trademark over the name Mega Drive. I could see how people came to that conclusion, however. The Mega Drive products existed, and it's easy to find them, as well as print ads and reviews of Mega Drive systems from the 90s. Then contrast that with the Mega Drive over in Japan and just make the probable assumption. I found a book called A Kingdom of Games, written around a series of interviews with Sega CEO Hayao Nakayama and founder David Rosen at the peak of Sega's golden age in the early 90s. In here lies part of the answer. It turns out that David Rosen hated the name Mega Drive because it sounded too much like a computer. We released the Genesis in the US in 1989. There was a reason for the name change. We wanted to avoid a misunderstanding. Mega and Drive were words associated with the PC market. PC stores didn't sell home video games in America. To keep from creating confusion if this was a computer or not, we chose Genesis, meaning the beginning. The beginning of the 16-bit era of home video games. So did he come up with the name Genesis? No. In fact, there was a short period of time where Sega was seeking a partnership with Atari Corporation, who would manufacture, distribute, and develop games for the Mega Drive in America. Yeah, the Atari Genesis. Imagine that. Originally, the name was going to be Tomahawk, but the staff at Atari never liked this name and decided to come up with one on their own, which was Genesis. Years later, after this book fell out of print, one of the Atari programmers from that era came forward. Scott Williamson, who worked on a few games at Atari in the early 90s, posted his version of events on the message boards of Atari Age, letting the world know the full story. We were originally hired to write games for the Tomahawk. That was a name that Sega gave their new Mega Drive system for North America. From what I know, Atari Vice President Larry Siegel had been brokering a deal where I believe Atari would be the North American, possibly worldwide, distributor for the system and its games. Sega was looking for an aggressive American name for the console. That's what led to the name Tomahawk. But we didn't like it very much. We had an office contest to see who could come up with a better name. I think the prize was a steak dinner. 
Steve Rhino came up with the name Genesis, either as the console that would redefine gaming or after the effect in the Star Trek II movie. Either way, it stuck. The deal later fell through, and I don't know if Steve ever got his prize, but that is seriously how the Sega Genesis got its name. This is further corroborated by a group of Atari programmers during a panel discussion at the Classic Gaming Expo 2004. Atari named the Sega Genesis, and the Sega Genesis was offered to Atari, and our Chicago office named it. <laughs> so there you go. Of course, Sega was smart for eventually going their own way, but it's still mind-blowing to me that Atari came up with the name Genesis, a vestigial tale that still hangs on today. Now, are you glad that you know? If so, go forth and tell the story, or at least live safe in the knowledge of this the next time you fire up your Mega Drive or Genesis. Or is knowing all of this too much? You can't handle it? It's going to keep you up at night forever? Well, you can't unlearn something, but there is always one final option, if you're willing to take the risk. Give me Genesis!